Hey now, today I'm going to be making a fresh hot sauce that I'm going to be pasteurizing via sous vide, so it's going to be shelf stable. I'm looking for something that's sort of like a medium heat. It's going to have some good veg going on and should be a fairly versatile sauce. So let's take a peek at the ingredients. So taking a peek at this, I've got uh, Anaheim peppers. I've got just under a pound of those. I also have just under a pound, but slightly more than the Anaheim uh, with some nice serrano peppers. I've got uh, some carrots here, some really nice carrots that my in-laws gave me uh, from the greenhouse. There's one and a quarter pounds of that. I've got three, they were fairly small limes that have gone ahead and peeled. Um, I also have three bell peppers and they came out to one and a quarter pounds for that. Uh, I'm going to, a little later on, be adding, uh, when I go to blend this, some fresh cilantro. You could also substitute some parsley if you preferred, but that'll give it a really nice herbal flavor and with the cilantro kind of nice and, and earthy and what have you. Um, I've also got here um, some onion. This is just a small yellow onion, comes in at four ounces. And then I've got some peeled garlic here and that was about two and a half ounces right there. Now the, the garlic and the onion and the carrots, um, I'm actually just gonna slice these into discs and I'm going to go ahead and give these a nice little saute just to kind of brown them up get a little Maillard reaction going on, maybe a little bit more sweetness out of both the carrots and the onions. So while that veg is sauteing up, I'm going to go ahead and with my serranos, I'm just sort of cutting them like so, um, taking off the stems and just chopping them into some manageable sizes here, just for when they go through the blender later on. My bell peppers, I'm going to go ahead and just take the sides, sort of quarter them like that. Again, it's just about being manageable later on. And the Anaheim's sort of the same deal, other than I'm also going to go ahead and just peel out, because it's got more of this pulp right in here. Just kind of pop that out. I'm not trying to get all the seeds out, um, but just doing it like that. And then again, just sort of a really rough chop for down the road. So I'm going to get all these ready, and then we can go ahead and um, get everything into, into the Instant Pot. So here are these somewhat caramelized, just a little sauteed um, onions and carrots and garlic. So I'm going to turn this off now and set it aside. So I'm going to load up the Instant Pot. So I've got my sauteed veg in there. I'm going to go ahead and get all the peppers in. As well as these limes. Then to top it off, I've got three cups of, this is a 5% acetic acid, apple cider vinegar. I'm going to pour that in there. I'm going to fresh crack in here right around a teaspoon or so of this black pepper. And then finally a tablespoon of kosher salt. And it's time to get this in the Instant Pot. I've got this in my Instant Pot and we're going for a five minute manual pressure cook on high pressure. So our peppers and carrots have pressure cooked and there we are. Look at that. Awesome. So it's time to get these into the blender. So now I'm going to go ahead and blend all of this up. I'm going to transfer some of this veg over into here. I'm going to have to do this in multiple batches because I don't want to wind up accidentally uh, blasting the lid off of my blender. And I'm just going to take some of this cilantro, and the stems are totally good to use. They still have tons of flavor and all kinds of stuff. So I'm just going to go ahead, pack that in there. One other ingredient I didn't mention was um, you want some kind of sweet, uh, preferably kind of tropically fruit. So I'm going with this. Uh, I've got a ton of <laughs> this uh, homemade canned pineapple that my mother-in-law gave me, which is awesome. It's nice and sweet. Uh, acidic, everything that you'd want in some canned pineapple. So I'm going to do some of that in here as well. And a little bit of this juice. Get this onto the blender. I'm using a glass blender because that works really well with uh, some of these spicier sauces. Nice and easy to clean up properly. And I'm just going to go ahead and make sure I don't accidentally get stuff everywhere here. Okay. Once I get this going, I'm going to let it blend for about a minute. this lid take a little peek here fantastic got a large mixing bowl here 
I'm just going to be putting uh, the sauce into here as I get it blended up. I'm going to carry on until we're done all of it. So I wound up adding an extra half cup of the uh, pineapple chunks and juice um, to this just to give it a tiny bit more sweetness. And now I'm just getting this into cans so that we can pasteurize using the precision cooker. So the water bath here is set at 150 Fahrenheit. I'm using my Inova precision cooker for this. And I'm going to get all of these jars into here and they will sit in here at 150 Fahrenheit for between two and three hours. Two hours should be sufficient, but I usually wind up giving it a little bit extra time, especially for the half liter jars. So, there we are. So it's been just about three hours here. So I'm just gonna pull these out and uh, let them cool down. After two and a half hours, I just pulled these out and I'm going to let them cool down. Ooh, let's give it a taste. Mmm, how about that? Delightful little balance. A lot of that cilantro is coming through, so it gives it that really nice herbal, sort of earthy character. We've got the, the onion and the garlic, which plays super nicely with the, the serrano and the Anaheim peppers. Um, I, I, the cilantro goes really well with that as well. That carrot in there um, and the pineapple, it gives a little bit of that sweetness and it kind of cuts through that heat just a little bit, but it's still got a decent kick. This would be great on tacos, fish tacos, uh, burgers, breakfast cereal, I don't know. Just like I was hoping for, uh, this would be a really versatile hot sauce. Super easy with that sous vide pasteurization. It's really nice because it doesn't kill the color too much or change the flavor really too much because you're not getting it super hot. Really easy, nice and shelf stable. You can just throw it, uh, I'm just gonna fire mine in the cold room with my other preserves um, and it'll last for a really, a really long time. Glad I made a sizable batch. So yeah, give it a whirl and until next time, keep it at 11.